This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's Friday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. This time around, we're looking at Pirates. Starting with Ixalan, Pirates began to be a creature type we've seen a lot of, and in Jumpstart, one of the pack themes is Pirates with a new Pirate Lord, Corsair Captain, being printed in the set. That got me to wondering which Pirates have performed the best over the years. To be eligible for this list, a card had to either have the pirate creature type or make pirate creature tokens. In all, 95 cards were eligible for this list, and in this video, we'll talk about the 10 that have made the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A Pro Tour, Players Tour, or Mythic Championship Top 8, as well as Legacy and Vintage Championship Top 8s are worth 2 points, and a Grand Prix or Magic Fest Top 8 is worth 1 point. At number 10, it is Deadeye Tracker, a pirate that does a pretty reasonable scavenging ooze impression. He is, of course, worse than the ooze, but there are some similarities. He comes down early and then can go after graveyards while simultaneously granting you card advantage, card selection, and plus one plus one counters, depending on what is revealed when you explore. One nice thing about the tracker is that he's one of the few cards that can explore repeatedly instead of it just being a one-time thing. He was mostly a sideboard card in Standard where he was played in Blue-Black Control and Grixis Energy decks. He was especially nice against God Pharaoh's Gift decks, as they were all about the graveyard. At number 9, it is Rishadin Airship, one of only two pre-Ixalan pirates to make the list. It actually has the same total score as Dead Eye Tracker, but I gave it the advantage because it has more Pro Tour Top 8s. By today's standards, the airship really does not look like much. A 3-mana three 3-1 three with flying that can only block flyers would be like a C-plus in Limited in today's game. That is, a card you will always play, but not one you want to take super early, and it's not a card you would ever play in Constructed. But back in 2000, this was a lot better, especially in Masks Block Constructed, a format dominated by the Rebels deck. Because very few Rebels flew, the airship represented a real threat against them. It gained all of its points in the only two non-Rebel decks to top 8 the block Pro Tour in New York in 2000. It's never gained any points since then. And number 8 it is Siren Storm Tamer. This pirate brings a cheap evasive body to the table, something that's pretty nice in the early game, and it also comes with later game utility because it can counter spells that target your creatures. It was played in standard mono blue aggro and tempo decks, which loaded up on cheap evasive creatures like Storm Tamer, and one of the biggest things the deck could do was stick Curious Obsession on a creature to generate card advantage. The Storm Tamer was both a good target for the aura, and it could also help you protect a creature that you had already put the aura on. It doesn't have any points in Pioneer yet, but it wouldn't be surprising to see it accomplish that at some point. At number 7, it is Fanatical Firebrand, a cheap goblin pirate that can attack right away, in addition to having the ability to ping something by sacrificing itself. That last part makes sure that it has at least some utility all game long, even if it has to stop attacking. All 15 of Fanatical Firebrand's points came in standard mono-red aggro decks. At number 6, it is Vraska, Relic Seeker, a planeswalker who makes pirate creature tokens. 6 mana is a lot, and planeswalkers that cost that much have to bring some serious power, and Vraska doesn't disappoint there. She has a plus 2 that can protect her while also pressuring the opponent with menace creatures, and a minus 3 that allows her to kill a lot of things, and it even provides you a treasure token for a bit of fixing. So, Vraska can take over a game all on her own. In her time in Standard, she was played in 3 and 4 color energy decks, as well as in Golgari and Sultai mid-range decks, but she doesn't have any points since early 2019. At number 5, it is Dire Fleet Daredevil, a pirate who not only brings a nice aggressive body to the table, but it can also steal an instant or sorcery from the opponent's graveyard. When you can play it and cast that spell right away, it often amounts to a 2 for 1, since most spells are going to give you a card of value. Even if you can't cast that spell, the Daredevil does still exile a spell permanently, and at least that means something sometimes. It was played in a bunch of different red aggro decks in Standard, including Mono Red, Boros, and Gruul. It also has a single point in Pioneer from a Mono Red aggro deck. It has already seen considerable play in Modern 2, where it is featured in Human Tribal decks. Dire Fleet Daredevil is going to continue to put up points, and it'll be interesting to see where it ends up on this list in the long run. At number 4, it is Hostage Taker. We just saw a pirate who can steal spells, 
And here we have a pirate who can steal creatures. It's actually tied with Dire Fleet Daredevil, but it has more Pro Tour Top 8s, so I gave it the edge. One thing to note about the Hostage Taker is that it was a card that received Erratum immediately. As originally worded, it could exile itself repeatedly, and that created a pretty easy combo alongside Forerunner of the Coalition, who could also search up a Hostage Taker. The Erratum made it so the Hostage Taker can only target other creatures. You can still pull this off with two Hostage Takers, but that was enough to make that combo too weak for Standard. That said, Hostage Taker is still very strong. It comes down and kills a creature, and then you can play that creature later on in the game. That results in a 2 for 1 in most scenarios. In Standard, it was played in Sultai Energy, Golgari Constrictor, Blue Black Control, and Esper Midrange. It has also been played in Pioneer Niv Mizzet and Delirium decks, and in Modern Human decks. Like the Daredevil, Hostage Taker is going to continue to put up points, and it'll be interesting to see which of them will beat out the other, as both are still seeing considerable play, and they're tied for their total score. At number 3, it is Spectral Sailor. This card is somewhat aggressive, but it also likes to make it to the long game, because at that point it has a pretty powerful mana sink that draws you cards. Spectral Sailor has had a great 2020 so far, as all of its 39 points have been gained in 2020, and there's still 5 months to go. The Sailor has a variety of homes in Standard, including Simic Flash and Blue-White Control, but its biggest home of late is Teamer Reclamation, or Four Color Reclamation. These decks seek to abuse Wilderness Reclamation in a variety of ways, and while drawing extra cards with the Sailor isn't as busted as many other things the deck can do, the deck is happy to have a Mana Sink that draws them cards to find themselves one of those win conditions. It has also been played in Pioneer Spirit decks. These are decks loaded up with creatures with the Spirit type, and several payoffs for that type as well. These decks are usually banned, so they can run Collected Company. Even though that format was only announced in October of 2019, and didn't receive its first premiere event until a couple of months later, the Sailor already has 12 points in the format, all of them coming in the first three months of 2020. As I said, Spectral Sailor has gained all of its points in 2020, for a total score of 39. It is being played a lot right now in both Standard and Pioneer, so it is really on an upward trajectory on this list. At number 2, it is Kite Sail Freebooter, a 2-mana 1-2 that comes with flying and a hugely disruptive ability. Taking away your opponent's best non-creature non-land card is very disruptive, and even if they have two removal spells and you can only grab one of them, you're still going to do okay because your opponent has to use removal to get the other removal spell back. And that's pretty much the fail case. Normally, the Freebooter will cause your opponent more problems than that. The Freebooter didn't actually put up any points in Standard its first time through, but it has been a key card in Human Decks in Modern, along with fellow pirates Hostage Taker and Dire Fleet Daredevil. These decks are made up entirely of humans and human payoffs, and most of the humans also have disruptive into the battlefield abilities, which let you add to the board while making your opponent's lives difficult. Which we've already seen with the other human pirates that are played in the deck. Humans have been a Tier 1 deck in Modern since 2017, and that doesn't look like it will be changing anytime soon. The Freebooter has already gained some points in Standard as a result of being reprinted in Core Set 2021, with two top 8s at the 2020 Players Tour Finals, one coming in Mono Black Aggro and the other in Winota. If the Freebooter really becomes a fixture in Standard this time around, there's a real chance it could eventually pass the number 1 card on this list, which is... Kari Zev, Skyship Raider, our second pre-Ixalan pirate. Although, unlike Rishad and Airship, Kari Zev was just barely before Ixalan, and was clearly given the pirate creature type with Ixalan block in mind. Kari Zev is an impressive creature for only 2 mana. Menace and First Strike is a nasty combination, as it reduces your opponent's options for effectively blocking, since First Strike can kill one of the blockers before combat, and now your creature survives. On top of that, Kari Zev brings her Monkey Token Pal along with her every time she attacks, and as a result she can do huge amounts of damage early, especially if you have removal to clear blockers out of the way. It began its time in Standard as part of Ramen Op Red Aggro and continued to see play in the post-banning version of the deck, which was then mostly just called Red Deck Wins. Near the end of her time in Standard, she was also played in Rakdos Aggro. She had a great career in Standard, one that was productive enough that even if she were never played anywhere else, she would have still been number one on this list. However, she's also gaining points in Pioneer, where she's played in that format's version of Red Deck Wins. She has a big lead on the three cards behind her, but they are all seeing more play than she is right now, so her spot on this list may not be completely secure. Well, that does it for this MTG Top 10. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you need to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, you should see the playlist on your screen now. 
And if you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.